We're seeing an unprecedented epidemic of depression in our society. Uh, more people are being diagnosed with depression than ever, including millions of children. Uh, the latest statistics I've seen are that more than one in ten Americans is on prescribed antidepressant medication. One in four of us is on psychiatric medication of one sort or another. Again, including millions of children, and I would just say uh, we really have no idea what these drugs do to developing brains, so we're doing a vast experiment with our nation's children. There's also a great rise in anxiety disorders, which often overlap with depression, with insomnia. So by all indications, uh, mental and emotional health in our population is not good and is declining. When I ask people why they think this is so, a common answer I get is that, well, look at the economy, look at the state of the world. But uh, my parents grew up in the Great Depression, which makes our economic troubles look pretty tame. And uh, they also lived through World War II, which is probably the most terrific human experience in history. And by all accounts, uh, American emotional well-being was much better during those periods. So something's happened, and uh, I think it really cries out for explanation. The conventional way of dealing with this is all focused on correcting imbalances in brain biochemistry. This is the biomedical model, um, which sees all um, mind processes as being the results of brain biochemistry, and therefore the only intervention that's thought of is to use pharmaceutical drugs to change brain chemistry. I think that model has proved very limited in its effectiveness. Uh, there's a growing body of evidence that the most commonly used antidepressant drugs, the SSRIs, work no better than placebos in most cases of mild to moderate depression. So I would say that model has really failed us. In trying to think what to do about this, uh, I did a lot of research on the uh, patterns of emotional well-being and, and uh, throughout the world. One thing I found is that, that there's a great consistency of research reports that depression is virtually unknown in the few hunter-gatherer societies left on the planet. You can't find a case of major depression in Papua New Guinea, for example. So that invites the question, you know, what are those societies doing different from us? And the answer is everything. You know, they are um, not disconnected from nature. They're eating diets that are natural, not highly processed. They're getting plenty of physical activity. Um, they get adequate rest and sleep. I think very significantly they enjoy the protection of very strong tribal and community support. So for all those reasons, I think they're protected. And when you look at what's changed in our society, I, I think you can see several trends. Our, our diet has become very different from that of our grandparents. You know, we're no longer eating foods in the forms that nature produced them. They're highly refined and processed. Most of us lead sedentary lives. We're very disconnected from nature and live in artificial environments. I think social isolation has increased tremendously in our culture. Uh, I, I think that's very significant. And we're also subjected to an unprecedented amount of stimulation from all the new media and technological devices for communication, email, texting, the internet. It's a matter of looking at total lifestyle and to design a, a program to protect and enhance emotional well-being, it really has to look at all aspects of lifestyle, you know, everything under our control, exercise, physical activity, rest, sleep, how you handle stress, how you eat, nature of social relations, you know, all of that. So I'd invite you to continue watching Big Think Mentor uh, to learn the specific aspects of the program uh, that I recommend for attaining optimum emotional well-being.